So tonight's event is, uh, is the first in a series of programs that have been organized in tandem with our current exhibition at Artist Space, a survey of the work of German filmmaker Hito Steyer. One of the key considerations for us in developing this exhibition with Hito was to not only consider and exhibit her work as a filmmaker, but to highlight her practice as one that is also rooted in other discursive, essayistic modes, such as writing and lecturing. For this reason, we invited Hito uh, to formulate with us a series of programs that would highlight some of her ongoing engagements and exchanges, both with other artists and writers and with certain theoretical concerns. So tonight's event has been organized uh, with the Berlin-based uh, writer and curator Karen Archie, along with a group of other writers and artists, including Hito, who have been involved in an ongoing discussion about feminism and the internet, and who have recently taken on the collective name Women Inc. Uh, the other people involved in tonight's re reading struck performance are uh, Karen, well, Karen Archie, and Hirsch, sorry, Dana Koppel, Eva Muntz, Kimberly Drew, Rachel Wetzler, and Seung Min Lee. So I'm going to hand over to Karen now to give a further introduction to the event tonight. Uh, but after the performance, there will also uh, be an opportunity for questions and responses from the audience. So thank you, Karen. Thanks, Richard. Um, thanks so much for having us. Thanks for coming. Thanks to Hito for inviting me to organize an event. Um, I'm just going to say a little bit about Women, Inc. Um, it was founded a few weeks ago. And um, <laughs> so we kind of saw this urgent need to start responding to, to issues publicly. And before this, we had been kind of complaining or nigging out, as you may have seen in the press release, in private channels such as Facebook and Gchat about issues that should be responded to publicly. And so we sought the idea to incorporate, to become an entity larger than oneself. And so this is kind of the idea of like where Women Inc. came from. Um, it also borrows obviously from Hito Styles' video Liquidity Inc. Um, and these ideas about incorporation and so on and so forth. Um, so the event tonight is supposed to be funny and light, but also incisive and somewhat, um, you know, it's, I think Nico said it's, it's sad because it's true. <laughs> so, um, so hopefully with a light spirit we can read through some of these words. And thank you to um, everyone for being here. Dana for coming down from Bard. Um, okay, let's do it. <laughs> Appropriation. Noun, when a male artist appropriates a woman's image for his own work. Have you seen Joe Scanlon's Danelle Wolford project? No, I'm not a fan of appropriation. <laughs> Affirmative in action, noun. When a curator or critic repeatedly invokes the work of the same women or person of color as their go-to token example, making it clear that they haven't bothered to become familiar with any others. Henry's affirmative in action is getting on my nerves. He's always talking about his commitment to diversity exhibition programming, but he includes the same two black women in every show and acts like he deserves a prize for it. <laughs> Alpha fail. <laughs> Noun. When a man in a leadership position tries to make a bold move but fails spectacularly. <laughs> I almost felt sorry for Deitch after his alpha fail at MoCA. They needed new leadership for sure, but that was definitely the wrong direction for the institution. The Benetton filter. When an art institution goes out of its way to photograph the few people of color at an event for use in marketing materials, aiming to create a sense that the audience is more diverse than it actually is. Uh, get your game faces on. It looks like the event photographer is using the Benetton filter and stalking all of the people of color in here. <laughs> Bees and buckle. <laughs> Noun. 
a Klaus Wiesenbach curated exhibition or media spectacle that elicits anger, embarrassment, and or schadenfreude from the art world. Do you think you'll go see the Bjork show at MoMA? That Biesenbachel? <laughs> no, I don't think, I don't have the patience to wait in line with tourists and sugar cubes fanatics for three hours. <laughs> Bontecu, the mo noun, the moment when an underknown woman artist who has been active for decades finally achieves mainstream recognition in the art world. Have you seen Lynn Hirschman Lisan's show at ZKM or Bridget Donahue? She really pulled a Bontecu. Breaking Badieu, <laughs> verb. Using philosophy to read mass culture as a means of breaking down the high-low divide while simultaneously reaffirming that divide. <laughs> Zizek is really breaking Badieu again with his Lacanian interpretation of David Lynch. <laughs> Clown sourcing. Verb or noun. When an established artist or celebrity uses crowdfunding for an expensive vanity project, even though he or she could easily fund the project through traditional channels. Zach Braff is the consummate clown sourcer. Last year he raised 3.1 million for a new movie on Kickstarter. Collaterator, noun. A creator whose art historical research extends only as far as trawling work and contemporary art daily. More houseplants and stock images? I think I saw this show on contemporary art daily yesterday. Who's the collaterator again? Deutsche Banking. <laughs> Verb. When an American art institution hires a European male as director or chief curator overlooking qualified women already on staff. Mary has been at the museum for almost a decade now, but unfortunately the board Deutsche Bank don't Pierre. <laughs> Devil wears Prado. Noun, a high-ranking, powerful woman in the art world who is abusive or excessively critical of younger female employees as an interpolation of institutionalized sexism. She thought she had landed her dream job as an assistant curator of paintings and sculpture until she realized she was working for a total Devil Wears Prado. <laughs> Ego gloves, noun. A filter of caution through which one speaks, <laughs> speaks to with those inflated gloves. Oh, evade, oh, sorry. <laughs> inflated egos. <laughs> I'm just putting on my own definition. Um, <laughs> will you double check this email I just wrote to my boss? I tried it, to write it with ego gloves so I won't get fired. Emotional. Adjective. When one is indifferent to something IRL, but feels compelled to respond in emoji. My mom just got her first smartphone and she's been so emotional lately. <laughs> e-whale, noun, an email sent in a period of distress that the sender usually regrets the next morning. I got a nasty email from an artist whose show I negatively re reviewed in Freeze this month and he hasn't looked me in the eye since. Fonicate, verb. To write a takedown of an influential figure that is based solely on hearsay and gossip. <laughs> Glenn Lowry was phonicated in the press, but he'll obviously keep his job since the only on the record source was a three year old seen and heard. <laughs> Fuck Penger, noun. The money art nonprofits allocate to wine and dine their donors, but somehow can't find money to pay their staff. Word. It's from the Swedish Fickpenger for pocket money. The reception after the panel was funded with ample fuckpenger. <laughs> the unpaid production manager served fine Bordeaux. <laughs> hey, hey, girls. <laughs> now. now. Mentally exercising by reading a difficult text, such as Hegel's Phenomenology of Spirit, in a manner analogous to Kegel's. 
I'll, I'll be, be there, there soon. soon. I, I just, just need, need a few minutes, minutes to finish my bagels. Hugo Bossing, verb. When an institution makes an artist or guest curator agree to exhibition sponsorship that he or she finds morally problematic. Even though I express discomfort at the idea of having my name attached to a Nazi uniform outfitter, the institution won't stop Hugo Bossing me into having this after party. Idea docking. <laughs> <laughs> When a man repeats a woman, I, woman's idea back to her as though it's his own, and everyone gives him credit for it. Stop idea docking me, Keith. I said that three minutes ago. Imelda Marxist, noun. A Marxist public intellectual with a glamorous lifestyle. See also Champagne Socialist. After the precarious labor conference, Sophia and Charles went to dinner at Nobu and discussed wage slavery over black miso cod, like true Imelda Marxists. I Quixote, noun, a person who operates under the illusion or delusion of being invisible to internet surveillance. Check out those I Quixotes who think posting a notice about inter intellectual property to their Facebook walls will prevent the company from storing their data. Menopasse, adjective, the particular invisibility of women over 50. In Hito Styles' video, How Not To Be Seen, a fucking didact didactic educational move file, she introduces several ways to disappear. One is to be over 50 or menopause. Moof diving. <laughs> Verb. The, super <laughs> the superficial invocation of critical or political theory to make an artist's or critic's work seem more serious and relevant. In the question and answer section of the panel last night, Jack moof dived into some malarkey about forgetting about forgetting Derrida, whatever that means. <laughs> No ma'am a gram. Noun. The censorship of images of female bodies on social media platforms such as Instagram. Scout Willis started the influential Free the Nipple campaign after, ex uh, after experiencing rampant no mammogram sentiments online. Ouija board. Noun. An art institution board of trustees whose composition and decision making processes follow no discernible logic or reason guided mainly by nepotism, sponsorship liabilities, quotas, or other forms of partiality. We loved your application, but our Ouija board might give the slot to one of their nephews or a friend's collection. I've given up trying to predict their selections. Quantum misogyny. <laughs> Noun. Attempting to secure absolute male, mostly white, supremacy in the art world by way of, of dubious art historical argument. Johnson's review was wholly reliant on quantum misogyny, arguing that women artists aren't more famous because they haven't worked hard enough to speak to universal human truths like white men have. Reverse politicking, verb, when liberal arguments are used to promote conservative ideas. The appropriation artist Bob Smith reverse politicked his way into the media's hearts by crying censorship when a gallery refused to show his paintings that debased women. Scape quote. Noun. An extremely harsh art review that superficially engages with the work of an artist in order to construct some broader argument about the state of contemporary art, court controversy, or allow the, uh, allow the critic to show off his or her rhetorical gymnastics. She started doubting her career after John panned her first solo show, but the review was nothing more than a lazy scape quote. Soul searching, <laughs> verb. When international curators scour the globe for so-called emerging art scenes to discover. Hans heard that Asia is the next big thing, so he's soul searching in Mumbai for his upcoming group show. <laughs> Single white female. Noun, when galleries or institutions add a token female artist in an otherwise all-male exhibition in order to avoid criticism. 
I was so excited to be in the show until I realized my work had nothing to do with the others. They pulled a single white female on me. Socket litter, noun. A device that has been rendered effectively useless because of planned obsolescence, <laughs> even though it works just fine. My iPhone 4 was perfectly capable of sending emails and texts, but the latest iOS release turned it into socket litter. Tote brag, <laughs> noun. A tote brag from a far-flung biennial or art fair that indicates the wearer's status as an important art world traveler. After returning from the Sharjah Biennial, Jane prominently displayed her tote brag everywhere she went, hoping someone would ask her about her trip. Vaginostic. Noun, an educated person who is sympathetic to feminism but unsure if there's still a need for it, such as millennial MFA students. <laughs> Kim's little sister went, went into a women's studies class of vaginostic and emerged a card-carrying bra burner. <laughs> the We Are the World treatment. Noun. When a famous artist is commissioned to make a site-specific work in a place and or with a community with which they have no particular connection. Bonus points if the work is about social issues. <laughs> I would go to the exhibition with you, but the commissioned Thomas Duth rip-off photos of Akron are such a we-are-the-world treatment. Xenophobia. Noun. The fear of strong women, such as Xena the warrior princess. <laughs> you could tell by the way the gallery v visitor talked about the Kara Walker show that he was a xenophobic. <laughs> <laughs> Yologing, <laughs> verb, to unapologetically chronicle, highlight, or celebrate bad and immature decisions publicly, especially online, in order to curry favor or gain followers. Jerry Salt's making a scene about his right to free speech after getting banned from Facebook for posting misogynistic pictures is the saddest display of Yologing I've seen in a long time. That's it. Are there any questions for the audience? <laughs> or maybe additions to the lexicon? Thank you. <laughs> I guess I'm interested in how, um, what the use of corporate language and how that, how you're trying attempting to subvert that through feminism. <laughs> well, it's really um, parodic. It's really like we're really parodying it. I mean, just the kind of the you know format of the slideshow, for example, is um, very corporate looking and. Um, we kind of wanted to poke fun at this kind of lean-in feminism. And so that was kind of the reasoning behind that, for me at least. Did you guys meet on Facebook? <laughs> no, on Tinder. <laughs> Swipe right. <laughs> um, I mean, the, the real answer to that question is, I think, sort of. I mean, not, I think we, the group came together in a kind of um, disparate way. I mean, I think we all, like this group of people, all met for like in a room for the first time like two days ago um, after having kind of discussions um, online, mostly like through a shared Google Doc. And we also have a lot of collaborators um, on Lexicon, some of them are here, um, but also in LA, in like, Montreal, like they're kind of dispersed all over the place. Um, but I think like Karen and I first met kind of online, like a long time ago. 
Uh, we met in an internet reading group. That's actually. true. We did meet in an internet reading group. Um, we, like, you, no, this isn't anything to do, like this group doesn't really have anything to do with Facebook, but basically the way in which we organized Women Inc. was that um, Rachel Wetzler, Jamila James, Anne Hirsch and I, um, Jamila is a curator at the Hammer Museum in LA and Anne Hirsch is um, also a recent LA transplant or New York to LA transplant and um, is a great artist and there's actually an article about her in Art Forum that just came out. But um, we went through a process of inviting a bunch of different people to take part in this project and we'll slowly grow the group and um, see how it, it evolves. But right now the group is actually rather small. I think it was about 15 people that um, really worked regularly on um, putting together this document and their names are all listed in the um, program that you have. So, um, yeah, and then also I know everyone personally pretty much too that's here. Hi, <clears throat> I'm not in the art world, I'm in the music world, but my friend's in the art world and this is great, uh, but I, my question for you guys is, so um, I see that you're doing work and you're trying to do good work, but what outside of um, the digital world, what are your plans for this kind of work? Like, do you plan to sit down with other women in other industries or is it just art or are you gonna talk to young girls, young women? Like what kind of like community work are you gonna do with, with this uh, platform? That's a good question. I mean, we did just form this like a few weeks ago. <laughs> so the real answer is like, I don't really know, to be honest. But um, yeah, basically the group was founded because we want to have community engagement and we want to respond to things. So for example, like Joe Scanlon's Donnell Wolford project, like this is a, a very, um, it's, it's a very, I don't know, contentious project that, you know, people, um, yeah, do you guys not have heads, do you guys know what this project is, kind of, yes, no? Um, well, basically, a male, a white male artist named Joe Scallon, who's actually pretty well known, I think he's a chair of the MFA department in Princeton, um, has been, he has an alter ego named Danelle Wolford, who is a black woman and he makes art vicariously through her. And so this project was included in the 2014 Whitney Biennial in Michelle Grabner's section. And a lot of people took issue with that, particularly um, people of color and women. And um, there was a lot of discussion on Facebook and in private channels, but it didn't really seem like there was some kind of consensus or real statement made about this. And so basically, instead of bitching on Gchat, like we kind of thought that we would come together. Yeah, and so basically, one of the ideas going forward for this group, um, and you know, maybe these people on stage right now will be involved in varying forums, is actually to write statements, to exper experiment with group writing and exhibition making and stuff like that, and um, continuing to expand um, the glossary. So, yeah. Could you say, sorry. Oh no, I was just gonna say that one of the things that, I really like your question because it's something that I thought about in participating, but I think what's really important is like kind of disassembling the culture of fear that happens in these industries where we all kind of have things that we collectively abhor, but how do we have that in public spaces? How do we develop a language that's savvy enough that you can be public and not feel super vulnerable. So I feel like the creation of a group like this and other offshoot groups uh, is this, uh, the first step in the right direction. Yeah, I just wanted to ask to follow up on that a bit is, um, because Karen, you said at the beginning that um, you were having conversations online that you thought you should be having in public, but I wonder what, that, what the difference is there. What is the difference in terms of language and notions of safety or vulnerability? Because that's seems interesting to the kind of language used in the lexicon. Well, I think that sometimes silence can be confused with complicity. And um, I think that there's a chorus of voices that are just never heard because people don't say anything in public. And so that was one of the um, 
you know, main reasons to form a group, but also um, I like this idea of having something that's a little bit more intimate and private being um, rendered for a public kind of um, forum. So um, a lot of these words are, you know, kind of, they're funny, but they're also, like Nico said, sabot true. And I think that just, you know, this process really opened up a lot of kind of, I don't know, it's kind of a weird thing, it's kind of a vulnerable thing, it's kind of funny. And so, yeah, I guess that, that dynamic is what we're looking for. I just wanted to know if you're gonna put the lexicon online yeah. or make it available in some way. I don't see why not, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're gonna keep expanding it too. So, and if you guys have any, you know, suggestions, let us know. I mean, we don't have a website or anything, but <laughs> coming soon. Coming soon. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if you could talk about the need to make a new language to discuss the topic, and um, how you decided that this was the best medium, and whether or not the current language restraints maybe fell short and that's a potential motivator? Um, as Kim said, it was a potty plot. Um, mm -hmm. I, can't, I came up with the idea in the bathroom and we just kind of went with it, honestly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, <laughs> it was one of those passive thought processes. But, um, yeah, I think, I think it was a mixture of it being fun and also feeling like, you know, what is, it, language is a patriarchal tool. I mean, this is kind of a very, you know, this is like kind of one of the ground um, ideas of women's studies and queer studies that, um, you know, language is something that helps us but is also kind of, it can um, betray us too and so, yeah, I think that that is something behind the idea of inventing something new. I was curious about the development of this. Like, are any of these terms things that like one or two of the people that wrote it were using with their friends beforehand and then it was like, oh, let's put that in there? Or was it all written for, for this occasion, sort of? I think it was pretty much written for this occasion. We just um, accumulated a lot of stuff and um, actually it's not that much if you look at it and um, and we're really hoping on expanding a lot on those terms and I think it's more thought of as a starting point you know also what you were saying earlier here um, I think this can really you know basically work for any kind of you know profession or a group or whatnot. I think it's a really liberating way of um, creating a new language um, to deal with any kind of issues you may have. Yeah, well, Freud said that a joke is a very serious matter, so I particularly enjoy this. I missed the joke that was about Lynn Hirschman's show. I didn't understand that relationally to the image of um, the Bantaku. Yeah, the Bantaku. Well, um, Lee, you, do you know, well, Lee Bantaku yeah, is an artist, yeah, yeah. yeah, who is basically rediscovered by Elizabeth Smith at the MCA Chicago about over 10 years ago now. And um, so our colleague Astria came up with that word, and we actually had a few different versions of that word. One included Georgia O'Queefing. <laughs> <laughs> But basically, Lynn Hirschman is an artist who is so massively influential. And she just has her first um, major solo show at um, ZKM in Karlsruhe and, um, is have, and is also showing at Bridget Donahue in New York. No, I, I, thought, I, I thought it was a spectacular exhibition. I just thought you were not Oh no, oh no, we, we love, love her. her. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was my concatenation, but uh, that I, I sold the definition short. But we had a really long list of words. I mean, we could have probably done this like twice as long. Yeah, um, yeah keep going. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, we had German splaining, and um, <laughs> we also had German splaining, but we <laughs> couldn't figure out a way to pull that off. Um, One that I really liked that got lost is Basket Twat. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, oh, well, I don't want to define it on the fly. That's why I, I'm glad I got to it off. Um, but one thing that I think is really important in this work that is evolving and growing and moving forward is that there is an air of positivity, which I think we didn't get a chance to really talk about, that it's not, like there's a space for being critical that's not being negative or being super snarky. We just really want to um, create a space of awareness and just like talking things to, into existence more than kind of shutting things down. Yeah. As Singh said, I think that it's diagnostic and tone. Yeah, I mean, I guess one question is, because this is the first time we're doing this and we weren't totally sure how this project would be received, um, is I guess, does this strike you as something that is A, necessary, B, interesting, or C, I mean, is the tone coming across? Is the humor useful? Because we don't want to go into that space where it's just not useful. If you have any words for the lexicon, speak now. <laughs> we're, we're accepting. Fisk University had yeah, to yeah. sell the accession, their collection. Yeah. yeah. So There are a lot of words that were double entendre, and we kind of had to really um, dissect what definition was, would be the more pertinent one for the purposes. But there's always room for like an A level, B level on every word. <laughs> what are some other ones that didn't make it in? Oh, yeah, I can't. Do you want to ask your question? Oh, just a moment ago, I thought of clock blocking. Oh. As far as uh, deadlines, artists and deadlines, that general sense. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah, I need that. Clock blocking. Don't clock block me. <laughs> um, Karen, I really... Like uh, you mentioned, German splaining. Since it's good to hear mansplaining here, since that's kind of almost the horizon of this project, right? The way in which Rebecca Solnit's essay and then all the kind of attendant tumblers, um, you know, all of a sudden turned mansplain, you know, all of a sudden codified a bunch of things that people were feeling um, and put language to it, and then actually then was able to congeal that even into a term. So in some ways, this lexicon project is is pushing towards that. Um, but of course, like with the nature of this kind of project, it's going to be scattershot. Things are going to, some are going to be stronger than others. Things will last. So I'm just kind of curious, since you have lived with these terms, all of you, a little bit longer than the rest of us now, what are the ones that, and I want to ask this kind of interview individually, what are the ones that you'd really want to push that like you find both the funniest and the strongest and the most significant and that you'd really want to make sure that we remember as we walk out of here? I think this is, the way we approach this is very not discriminating against any words or any <laughs> anything at all. I think it's really like up to everyone individual how you feel about any of these um, terms. And as um, Karen pointed out, this is also about like being in a safe place and experimenting with, um, you know, concerns and issues you may have. But with that said, um, I think that there are some words that seem to get this. I mean, some words got a strong reaction because they were just funny, I think. But then there are some that got a strong reaction because they're really, they really are true. Like, I think the Benetton filter got a strong reaction. And that was something that even when we were coming up with, like, 
terms we need words for that everyone kind of in this shared Google Doc was like, yes, <laughs> like that is a thing that institutions do and it's fucked up and like we should all be aware of that as just a thing that happens. And I think there were certain words like that. Yeah, I mean, I think the, th the ones that are the most useful are probably the ones that are not, I mean, they're funny, but not that funny, like the ego gloves. Um, I actually was like using that in Gchat. Um, and yeah, <laughs> it was like, okay, that's, that's something that, um, yeah, but yeah, no one's going to use probably like bees and buckle, even though. <laughs> 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 yeah, maybe they I will. think it's gonna fly. Yeah. And in the, the future of Women Inc. and the group growing and you know standing the test of time, I think one of the things that's really important too is that we're all very different people. Like we all bring a different thing to the table. So like there are naturally some words that we'll gravitate towards, but it's really like it will be done in the work that we do as people. Devil Wears, Wears Prado. 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 <laughs> yes. Very nice. Yeah, I mean, I would like to like make Hegel's a thing, but I don't know if oh <laughs> yes, we're all Hegel's start are a thing. <laughs> Um, I think both of the turns are great. Um, I think it's great that you're making up this turn and calling people's attention to it, but also I'm like concerned about by pinning those situations down to this turn, so it will necessarily add to the existing problems, add to the spectacles. Um, how do you see the dilemma? Do I make myself clear? Oh, because we're making a spectacle of things instead of solving yeah. the problems? Not necessarily that way. I think it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's great that you're like making people be aware of the situations, but also in, it's hard not to turn to a spectacle within the current situation. Well, yeah, everything in the art world is a spectacle, unfortunately. I mean, I think, I think awareness is the first step. Like, the speaking is revolutionary because we all kind of exist in a space. I mean, it, it is just like the matter of the culture of fear. So I, I would rather make a spectacle and like throw glitter on stuff I don't like than just sit in all day in a closed Facebook group. So maybe it can be, maybe the, the method isn't ideal, but it, it, like we said, is an impetus. Yeah, and to some extent, I think it's about consciousness raising. Like, there's a word for this that we didn't have to invent. Um, yeah, it's really about drawing attention to things which, which might prompt action. I think consciousness raising is actually oftentimes the link between theory and practice. Do you see um, there being room for men to join Women, Inc. now or eventually? in the future of the organization? We're only <laughs> accepting meninists. <laughs> um, I don't know, we haven't really talked about that. It kind of just was always implicitly women. I mean, it is called Women Inc. Um, or we could like change it to Women Inc. and Friends. <laughs> Um, I think that there's something really amazing about having something that's, that's female identified only. Um, you know, there's, I mean, everything else in the world is... Um, not that. Yeah, not for <laughs> women. So it's just, I don't want to just come up and say it, but yeah, everything else is, is, is you know, uh, co-ed or at least um, for men. So I don't really see why this is a problem. I don't know. Hi, this is a two-parter. So the first part of the question is, when you do, or if you do eventually include men in your group, will you, and you turn into a corporation that's turning a profit, will you pay everyone the same rate, or will men make 75 cents to the dollar? Um, that's the first part. The second part is, what's your um, like end game? What's the, what's the, like, um, the best case scenario of, the turn, of what you'd like to come out of this? Men will make 10 cents to the dollar. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I, don't, I think that I'm not sure we have an end game because, um, I mean, as Karen said, like this group is relatively recent and we kind of jumped into a project before creating a sort of 
position, a statement. Um, and I think that that actually was an advantage, um, even if it was somewhat like driven by circumstance, namely that we had an event to do. Um, because I think we kind of, instead of, you know, I think those conversation, conversations are important, but we really just started working right away and with a lot of people and it was, it was really cool to work that way. Um, and I think that part of what I see and maybe everyone else will disagree, um, what I see is kind of advantageous about that is that about this platform not really having a set program is that it can really be project driven and the next project might be totally different than this one and the participants might be totally different and, the, and kind of how it works might be different. Yeah, I would just add, I guess, that like super long-term endgame, like none of these words will be useful because the problems won't be there anymore, but realistically, like, yeah, this is like a collaborative ongoing project. I'll, I, I think that we'd like to go on tour, actually, <laughs> and um, perform this other places and even make it um, local, you know, and kind of evolve it to different um, cities and concerns, et cetera. Oh, oh, right, and we're going to um, start a line of baby teas. <laughs> and Call tip packs. brag. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, I was curious about something, and from what you said, like maybe this is something that hasn't been considered yet, but in terms of the, I guess, the authorship of, of the different words in this, is it something that you'd be interested in, in opening up, I guess, in a way, so that other, uh, other women or other people can, can contribute like their own words or their own sort of useful terms. Like I feel like something that was as open as like a wiki would be too much, but you know, is, is this something that you'd be interested in maybe spreading as, as a tactic that can be used in a public sense? I think maybe like very far down the road, something like that would be good, but actually we really gain a lot of power by working with such a small amount of people because everyone took it incredibly seriously. And we did this in a very short period of time. So we have a very intimate, respectful working dynamic and I think that that would be lost with a, like a, a very large amount of people. Today's Karen's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was about to say the same thing. It's a perfect way to end. So it's like we should all go and have drinks for Karen's birthday now. So thank you all for coming and thank you to Women Drinks. <laughs>